All right, we just uh, ran over to Billy Joel's again, me and Ryan, and picked up the new props. These are Soles 13.9s by 19 inch pitch. And uh, here, let me put some lubricant on there. Some lubricant on that joint. Ooh. Ooh, wow. Mm-hmm. Wanna grab your rag? Rip tag? Rip tag rag. Your rip tag rag. So I'm super excited to try out these props and see uh, if that solves the verdict. So that would be huge for us because as of right now we have no verdict. Spin it on. It looks backwards, Ryan. Hmm? Is that backwards? How is that backwards? The prop. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh it was going on there. All right, we're gonna get this on. Hold on. All right, we got the prop on. Took a little bit of wiggling, but it fits way more snug than the other one did. Dude, it's close to the lower unit. Is the other one that close? I mean, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna hit, right? It might. No, look at it. How, how could it? No, other way. Belly Joel's. This is a right hand, and we have a left hand prop going on that side. And, uh,. I'm super excited to uh, see see what the V is. All right, two fresh props on there. And uh, we're gonna go take her for a spin. They are super close to the lower unit because the pitch is further back. Maybe they were that close before. What is that noise? Wait, listen when I spin it this way. And then this way, it doesn't make a noise, but this way. How many more about that? All right, we're going for a ride. Let's see what the V is. Pulling it with the EcoBoost right now, and we're gonna see how it does at the boat ramp. Very suspect. We just filled up gas, and uh, good, um, I mean, we needed to see if um, everything was reading correctly, which it was. We're at, what did we put in, 35 gallons? 35? Yeah, 35 gallons, which is exactly what it was reading. So we're gonna reset it to, the tank fill, The tank holds 120 gallons, we'll reset it to like, I don't know, Ryan, what do you think? 119, 118 gallons? Yeah. Just to play it safe for the boys. And then um, go for a ride. And I'm excited to get on plane and see uh, what the verdict is with the boat. So we'll see you at the ramp. All right, so we ran the boat a couple different times on plane. And the props definitely make a difference. This time we had the trim tabs all the way up and just trimmed the motors down at a negative, negative angle. And the boat jumped right up on plane a lot easier than it did before with the other propellers. So I'm happy with that. Um, our RPM, they're still, they're off by a little bit. Nothing no, not crazy. a lot. Not a lot. Our, RP, our RPMs are off by a little bit, not a lot. I'd still like to have those perfect so I don't have to drive like that. Yeah. That's annoying. Um, the only thing is our fuel economy is not great. I was at 45, 44,000 RPMs going, what, 20, 26, 27? miles an hour I was getting 2.4 which if you think about it isn't the worst thing in the world in um, in calm weather but I'm not always gonna be fishing in calm weather it's gonna be chop I'm gonna have fish in the boat people in the boat ice I'm gonna have both live wells full gear leads and then see what my fuel economy is after that but we're gonna go take the boat offshore and run it and uh, see what the deal is like that See what the deal is. All right, so, yo, we haven't had a drip of water in the scupsers. I know, dude. Oh, there's a drip. 
Barely. Put some new scuppers on the boat. I mean, getting the drip in, but nothing like before. We're having water pour in the village. Um, Ryan's gonna calibrate the GPS because the GPS and the autopilot are off. And uh, we are on the beach right now, testing out the rig. Unreal. And we also got to figure out what's going on with the Suzuki gauges because we just filled up the tank and I'm reading 119 gallons, but Jay says it's reading off the sensor and it's not burning any fuel. It's, it's not, not showing. reading off the sensor, it's like it detects it. That's why it shows the Yeah, it's not the showing amount. us what we burn, which is very weird. So we are going to try and figure out all that. Brian's calibrating this joint. And uh, yeah, but I noticed a huge difference in these propellers. I got them playing a lot easier. Um, no, no change in um, top end speed, no change in fuel economy, but that's all I want to do is get out of the hole easier. So I'm happy with it. All right, so a couple things have happened. So we uh, picked up Johnson, went for a ride, picked up Brad. The heck? Picked up Brad, went for a ride, and uh, right now we are spot locked right in front of Kato's bridge. And we got the troll motor and spot lock trying it out because Ryan and I are gonna go fishing tomorrow. And uh, it's holding perfect. Also, we picked up a 320 light gray angle cooler and it is badass. And, it's, and it sits right there perfectly in the boat. All right, let's put this John back. Put the John in right? beautiful and that's what we need look at that thing looks beautiful on the boat and it's gonna hold a lot of fish so we're gonna need that from our kingfish and we're gonna need a whole lot of fish along with this fish box but we got a couple problems with live wells right now so for starters we couldn't put a valve so we have a Y I don't know if I remember telling you guys for this live well we have a Y a little Y uh, piece so we got two drains one going out the bilge and then one going out here through that through hole right there and we couldn't hook the valve up to that yet um we just haven't gotten to it and uh so we only have one drain but it drains too fast i like to pressurize the live wall so the baits aren't sloshing so but and this one for some reason that drain when you pull it goes into the bilge which is fine because we'll just plug it and then we have a drain up here with that valve on it, but it's wide open right now and water's not draining out of it, which is super, super weird. I don't know why water's not draining. It's, it's a hose. It's literally two feet of hose. I don't know why water's not coming out of it. Doesn't make any sense. We're gonna try and figure that out. But other than that, everything's running amazing. Everything's good. Just little stuff between. Yeah, just, just little stuff that we gotta fix, but spot lock works nice. I'll tell you that, stoked on that. And, uh, Big shout out to Angle Coolers for the cooler. Go check them out. I'll have a uh, link down below to Angle Coolers website. Check them out. All right, let's see it, Ryan. Ryan he just finished up some electronics work on the boat 
and we're gonna pick it up, bring it back to Jupiter, and code it up. We're gonna be putting Saram Lock on the boat, doing the whole boat. Uh, you're gonna wanna stick around for the process. We're gonna take you through. I will see you guys when we get to the boat. All right, we got Ryan hooking the boat up. It's looking good. We will see you back at the house. All right, we got the boat back. A little dirty. See how it sheets water. So we are finishing the boat up today and I'm not going to bore you guys and show you the whole process of us coating it. So I'll just kind of give you a little preview of the finished product. Coated the wrap. It's got the hole done. Pretty good shine to it. I think it was kind of more of a, a matte finish when he got it on. A lot more hydrophobic. Be cleaner for longer, protect the wrap from fading. I think the wraps last, I don't know, four or five years. Could be wrong. We'll probably get a couple years out of it knowing Adam running charters and kingfish trips. This boat's gonna be abused quite a bit. So we'll see what happens with it though. Curious to know. So we will see you on the inside. We're gonna do the cushions, the electronics, the deck, all the smooth, the console, you name it, it's getting coated. See you in a minute. Okay, so we got the engines done, the cowlings, midsections, lower units, props, trim area. Up here, you get a good amount of grease built up on there. Clean that up. Coated that as well. And the best thing about the coating on the lower units is they don't stain. So usually you get that river stain, that yellow river stain from, I don't know, here down. And it could build up in a week and you gotta use some kind of acid to clean it off. Once you put the coating on there, you don't have to clean it off anymore because, well, you won't get the staining. It can't penetrate the coating and get into the paint. So really good benefit of coating the lower units is not having to deal with that. And it lasts for years. So literally years, you won't get a bit of yellow on here. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Great plus. So we have a product for the non-skid as well. And this actually seals up the non-skid, makes cleaning a whole lot easier, adds some hydrophobics to it, but it actually seals the non-skid so that blood and other stuff can't penetrate it. And just makes cleaning a whole lot easier, especially after a long day of fishing. No one wants to sit there and scrub the deck because there's really nothing else you can put on the deck. I mean, you could wax it, this and that, but most of the people I know use bleach and a lot of soap to clean the deck. So whatever you put on there, the protection is just gonna come right off but the ceramic is really chemical resistant, so you could still scrub this pretty good. Um, the wear resistance is very high and you could get bleach on it and use whatever soaps. It's not really gonna affect it. So the biggest question I get asked is how long does a ceramic last? How long does ceram lock last on a boat? And there really isn't an exact answer to that for quite a few reasons. And it depends on the boat and the person, you know? Is the boat old? Is it new? You know, this boat's 25 years old. Um, do you fish it every day? Do you fish it twice a month? Is it stored inside a marina? Is it outside on the water on a lift? A lot of different variables that go into it that determine, you know, the lifespan of the coating and how long you're going to get out of it. And that's going to be different for everyone. For the last 15 years, Ceram Lock has developed quite a few products for boats. And we have products that are more application specific. And by that, I mean, we have products for the non-skid, better suited for cushions, the glass, electronics, metalwork, the outboards, lower units, the hull, you know, gel coat and paint um, are all different products because we found that they're more suited for that application. And by that, I mean the non-skid is a lot higher concentrated. It's gonna withstand that heavy scrubbing, uh, you know, any chemical use, bleach, uh, heavier soaps that you would normally use to clean your boat. If you had wax on there, you're stripping that wax off and now you're left with no protection. It's gonna be even harder to clean the next time around. Our fabric material is breathable. It's non-slip and stain resistant. The 600 that we're gonna put on the Isinglass here is gonna clean some of these light water spots off and leave a very hydrophobic finish. 
which will reduce spotting and make it easier to dry. Or if you're out in rough seas, the water is going to beat off of it. You're going to see a lot easier. Um, same thing goes with the electronics. All these fingerprints will clean off nice and easy. Leave a really slick finish and actually increase the touch sensitivity on there as well. We'll hit all these gauges and the metal work as well with the 600. So it still goes back to the question of how long does it last? And again, there really isn't an answer to that, but we could just tell you what we've seen over doing boats the last 10 years. And we've seen it last years on the engines. Um, you could get years on the deck. Um, the simpler stuff like the electronics, the glass, you know, it could be six months, could be a year. It's easy to reapply, which you want to do anyway and keep it hydrophobic. So here's the 600. We're going to go ahead and put that on the electronics and the glass. Do this with one hand, a little juice on there. And it's just wipe on, wipe off application. Hit all the gauges. Turn that off. And I'm just going to let it sit for 10 minutes and come back and wipe it off. Same thing on the glass. Very quick, very easy. You can see it going on. I'm gonna hit the uh, inside as well. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. You could let it sit for five to 10 minutes. You could come back tomorrow, it doesn't matter. Um, as long as it's dried, sat for five to 10 minutes, you're good. So it turns into kind of a little white dust and it just wipes right off. So I already wiped off the inside, but here's the outside. Again, simple wipe. Comes right off. Just like that, crystal clear. Takes all those water spots off. Give this uh, a day to sit before getting wet, and then you'll see it's just super hydrophobic. The 600 is awesome. It works great on a lot of things. Your car windows, you can put it on your paint, works great on there as well. Your house windows, you can do your cowlings on your engines. Uh, you can go pretty much everything with the 600. We have it available for sale on our website, ceramlockcoatings.com. Check it out. If you've come this far in the video, thanks for sticking around with us and watching. Uh, we'll have a link in the description to our website, ceramlockcoatings.com. You can answer any questions you might have on there. Shoot us a message or an email. Um, you could also message Adam, get in contact with us. Um, we're here in Palm Beach County. We service locally here. Uh, we have crews to do the detailing, all the prepping, and we do the application. Uh, we also sell our products on our website, so definitely check those out. Thank you guys again for watching. Hopefully we will see you in the next video on the boat showing you how it cleans up. What is going on, boys and girls? This is the very final boat remake video. And uh, I'm here. What's going on, guys? With the man, Ryan, from Advanced Marine Tech. And uh, we're filming off an iPhone right now. Haven't filmed on the camera in a very long time. My microphone is dead. We got Ryan's brother, Connor, back there. And he's letting us film on the iPhone. We got big storms behind us. And I got a snook trip in about two hours. We're going to bang it out real quick. Bang it out. We have not showed you guys any, really hardly any, of the wiring that we did on the boat. but. The whole boat is completely redone, and we I'm were just let... trying to get it done super fast. We were just trying to get it we, done. We needed a fish, so that's what was going Towards the end, it was like, put down the camera. We got to get to work, type of thing. Yeah. So, we grinded it out. Ryan did a lot of work and put a lot of hours on the boat. So I'm super thankful for him, and uh, I'm gonna let him get this, get it into us, yes, get sir. it into us, get, get this into us. Let's get into it. <laughs> okay, right dog. You eating? What is going on guys? My name is Ryan from Advanced Marine Tech and we're gonna do a whole walkthrough of the entire video from bow to stern. There's a lot of electronics on this boat, a lot of, a lot of good stuff. So we're gonna start from the bow and work our way back. At the bow. What do we, we got, right dog? We have a 120 pound thrust Rodan trolling motor powered by 236 volt Abyss batteries. Shout out to them for hooking us up. They did hook it up. Super, super long trolling motor. Good for spot locking, for mud fishing, so, for everything. Let's be honest, Ryan. What do we got to say about the troll motor? We've had some issues. We have, we have had. Some We've issues. had some issues. I will be 100 percent honest. I'm not sponsored by Rodan. I've had issues with the strong motor. And it's fairly new. And a couple of issues. I'm pretty sure you had to drive to the west coast. Though. I did drive to the west coast, and the problem with Rodan did help though. They, they, they did, helped. but they the trolling motor is not the same. 
about the same. And, and that's just me being honest. Okay. All right, we got a troll motor plug up here. That way it is out of all the weather elements and it stays nice and dry. So Ryan said, let's put it on the inside of the hatch. So instead of having a plug out here on the outside that, you know what I mean? I leave it plugged in or plug in when I'm going to fish. So originally we were going to have it right here, but you know, sun, sun and salt still gets in that little spot. So it's best to have it inside of a hatch. That way right. it's out, right. out of everything. So not getting fish on it, fish blood, salty water all day long out of the heat it's on the inside and let's go look at abyss batteries that's powered by the trolling motor huge 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 shout out to nick from abyss batteries really cool guy and he's got some sick batteries 236 volts um powering that one trolling motor and it lasts how long eight hours eight so that hours. those troll those batteries right there it's a 36 volt 60 amp two of them they're very small they're 16 pound compared to these big four batteries 16 pounds a battery not even i think 13 honestly yeah 60 60 amps 36 volt and you could run your trolling motor in two mile an hour current on spot lock for four hours with one of them i tried one of them it worked perfect literally lithium battery i stayed in two and a half mile an hour current the whole time up until the last second the, trolling, the um, battery died and it stopped what's cool about lithium is regular batteries you know what I mean? You will stop. You won't be able to hold in spot lock as much, or you'll see that your battery is less powerful once it gets on a lower percentage. Right, Ryan? Yep. With lithium, it could go all the way down to 2%, but it's still going to be running at full capacity until it dies. And then once it dies, it's over. Yeah, you're done. You're done. So I got two of them. And like I said, Nick was kind enough to hook it up to the channel. I will have a discount code popping up right here. Please go ahead and check out Abyss Batteries. I reached out to many lithium companies. This guy was really, really cool. He was with it. He knew what needed to be put on boats because he's a fisherman himself and he made it happen. And now fishermen, fishermen like us are getting to enjoy it. So discount code popping up here, go check them out. Abyss Batteries, Ryan, continue on. So moving up to the hard top, we have, I'm a big lighting guy. Love lights, underground lights, underwater lights. 12,000 lumen rigid light bar. Spreader lights by Lumatech. Um, so when you're throwing fish in the fish box, you can see everything at night. We have undergone lights, uh, ice blue undergone lights. Uh, Show them. They go all the way box. back from transom all the way up to, I think that rod holder. Yeah, all along the whole entire gunnel. All along. It's a little bit dirty up there because I didn't paint that there's no reason to. All right, moving down here. This is the constant best part of the whole entire boat. And I mean, it is it not, is, it's not clean right now. I've been fishing on it the past few days. I'm about to go fishing on it. It's a little salty, but still appreciate it for me. Simrad NSS 16. Good Seymour mapping on the unit. Get you all the racks, everything. Good Samaritans here. Fusion audio all around the boat. 7.7. Seven. What, what do we got for speakers? So we have a total of six 7.7 seven Fusions. Um, all have the lighting rings around them. Then we have one. 10 inch fusion sub right below the helm and i mean it is it is it's loud dude loud. we got five speakers total yep, and, and one sub and we have a 2400 watt uh amp powering all these the subs and the speakers so it definitely definitely uh definitely loud awesome yeah man yeah man <laughs> yeah man okay ryan guys by the way if you're enjoying this segment i know it's windy i know the conditions are not great we're on a time schedule here we both got a lot of stuff to do we need to get the video out. We need to get it uploaded to YouTube. This is, what is this, Ryan? They think it's still July here. We're working on the boat, June. Oh, yeah. It is November 21st. Yeah, it is. It's I mean, four. We've been fishing the boat really hard. I mean, we've been beating it up for three, four months now. We have, we have. And the boat's sick, we love it. It's definitely been getting a little bit of heat. Here's my fiberglass job. You guys remember that? Yeah. Uh -huh. We never said we're fiberglass guys. I would never said I'm a fiberglass guy. No. But, uh, like I said, drop a like, subscribe if you guys are not already subscribed to the channel. We put a lot of work in the boat and we tried to show you as much as we could of, of the process. And uh, it was a super big learning curve for both of us, for sure. You know what I mean? Everything to fiberglassing. And All the way from fiberglassing to sanding to painting to uh, prepping, motor work that I don't know how to do. 
and uh, yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. All right, let's keep it going. Let's go back to the helm here. Keep talking loud. It's windy. All right, guys. Listen up, man. All right, we have 16 Bokatech switches, light up blue, blue ring lights, underwater lights. Wait, what do lights. we got? They don't even know. They go ahead and know. tell them everything. These are all the pumps, floor well, live well, the two bilges, saltwater wash down, two spreader lights, nav lights, anchor lights, gunnel lights, underwater lights, live well, and three accessories, which are also lights. That's the hard top light. Right and then us. what the is accessory that? Accessory two is the light bar. And then accessory three is there's lighting all in the hatches. Yes, so there's lighting in the hatches. When uh, it's dark out and we wanna be able to see in the hatches, we got separate accessory for that and a whole bunch of other good stuff. And uh, what else we got, Ryan? Simrad autopilot, Simrad radar. I mean, everything is Simrad. So everything's integrated through NEMA 2000. It's all connected, everything talks to each other. And that way it's easy to use everything. What do we think about Simrad? Ryan likes it. I'm not crazy about it. That's just me. I, you know what? If you want me to tell, if you want me to tell the truth, Garmin. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious Garmin. I mean, I've just, I've always pushed for Garmin on boats. It's um, super user so. friendly. Simrad, yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot going on. It's not yeah, a bad yeah, unit. Yeah. It's not a bad unit. It's, it's a not. great unit. It's just more complicated. Yeah. And I like things to be simpler. You know what? I had a great opportunity to get a Simrad. You had to take it. Big shout out to Joe Mealy if you're watching the video. Thank you so much. I am not unappreciative. I love this unit. Um, it's just not what I was used to growing up fishing. That's it. Yeah, man. Uh, so we got the. Uh, Radio, Simrad yeah, radio. Beat, beat Simrad VHF radio. Which works great. I don't have any problems with that. No. Eight foot antenna up top. Yep. And uh, what else do we Trim got? Trim tabs. Trim tab switches right here. Bottles. And we got the hydro jack. I don't oh, even know yeah. if we told anybody about that. So you move that and then this is like a jack plate. So it moves up and down. And it's like my bracket. I can move up and down. Like I said, I got the boat from the West Coast. This is what they have. It's very West Coast-esque of them. I'm not crazy about it. That's just me. That's my opinion. I'd rather have an Armstrong bracket. I cannot afford one right now. So I'm going to have to. I can't. I'm going to have to ride this out for the time being. That's why you guys are going to like this video. I can't afford it. And uh, comment, share with a friend. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you guys. The builder's not pretty. The wiring's great. Okay. Yep. It's the design of it that is horrible. And we, when we got to the bilge, we were like, dude. I am not taking every single piece out of that bilge and then sanding it and then repainting it. It's like, I'm just not doing it. I just have to bilge already painted. So we left it how it is and just fixed it up a little. You can turn that accessory two light on. Or is it three? Three. 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 Nice so blue light up in here. Those Sierra pumps, yes, they came with the boat. They got to go. I've been putting that off. But, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, you just got your two pumps. You have valves for both live wells. These are the drain valves for them. Um, then you have all the wiring ran underneath. You can't even see it. Got the flow switches flow down switches. there. Two live well pumps, and then these are the drains, right? This is for my live well. That's for my floor well. And uh, I don't know if we can show you, but got a little bit of more plumbing for that here at the front, through the deck, going under the deck right here. And we actually got it working now. We did. There it's working nice. It is. Now my floor well is not working like it should be. No. The water actually coming in right now because I have this. And I have that up, see? What I, what I was doing when I was trolling is I was having that up and then this just cracked and yeah. it was working just fine. Oh, good. But I can't sit still like that. Yeah. But freshwater or, so, or inshore fish tonight, it's going to be nice. But yeah, we got all those new wires back there. A lot of it's new. Some stuff stayed on the boat. Some stuff was in perfect condition. And we just fixed it up a little bit. And yeah, yeah man. that's what we got. That is the bilge. I think that's pretty much everything from wire. I think that is pretty much everything. Another Lumatech back here. Oh yeah, another rear rear spreader. Anchor light. That's pretty yep. much everything. We've got a lot of a lot of man hours on this boat. Pretty much just, just the two of us. A lot of elbow grease on this boat, yeah. dude. A lot of it. And uh, I think that might be it for the wiring session. Sure. Session, like I said, Session. please go ahead and check out Ryan at Advanced Marine Tech. I'd really appreciate it. Check him out for me, Advanced Marine Tech. I'll have a phone number and his Instagram website linked down below. He's one of my good buddies. Give him a call if you need any wiring needs. You need your boat rewired, you need new units, Garmin, Simrad, Garmin. I do it all. He does it all, radars, any, you know, anything, really. 
Just give him a call. Tell him I send you over. I'll treat you right, and I'll treat you right even if you don't, but you should tell him anyways. Hey, Ryan. Good. Good. All right, guys. If you want to sell your boat or buy the boat of your dreams, hit me up. I'm a yacht broker with Sovereign Yachts, 561-990-9283. Hit me up. I'll get you on the water. Call me first, and then we'll do it with your car. <laughs> that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I think that's all we got. If you guys would like to book a charter on the new boat, I will have um, my phone number linked down below. We have a lot of promotions going on. This is the most important one. It's my charter business. It's my boat. But, uh, whoa, Pelican just smoked some right there. If you guys would like to book a charter on the new boat, like I just said, phone number linked down below. Please only call me for charter questions. Do not call me asking, you know what I mean, random questions. I'm, I got a lot to do in one day and only 24 hours and I can only keep up with so much. And like I said, I would like to communicate with you guys as much through the comment section on YouTube as I can, but you can't text me asking random stuff. Now, if you want to go fishing or, you know I mean, if you guys need help with something. Something urgent. Um, I think that's all we got. Boat's been getting tight lately. I love it. I love it. Fishy boat. Um, I appreciate all you guys watching. We're going to start pumping out videos really, really hard again shortly, I promise. All right. It is officially the first time ever going fishing on the Parker. I can't believe it. What do you think, my dog? We're going to crush. My dog. Gonna go do a little bit of commercial king fishing. We gotta go. We gotta go test the rig out on the water. See see what the V really is. Yo, what's the arm right here? Armsdale? Looks like a jack. So uh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna ride out Jupiter Inlet, catch some live sardines. And uh, we'll see you when we're doing that. See you. Got him. Was that not all of them on top? Maybe it wasn't, right? I got some type of story. Uh, for, first bait for me is a blue runner on the boat. Wow. Not looking good, boy. Are you... <laughs> There's some coming off as I was pulling it up. We didn't even mark them. Saw them flexing. Oh my god, Ryan. Oh my god. Dude, he's lost a hundred baits. Oh my god, look at him. Mm. If your baits are mega bloody, so many bloody. Oh my god, turn around, look at the screen. Look at it, look at it. <laughs> oh my god, they're absolute. Oh my god, there's a whole school under the boat. Look, look under the boat. Oh my word. Right. They were real tough, Chief, huh? <laughs> Any bloody one stuff put in there? The amount of bait here right now, boys and girls, is dumb. Alright, come for it. Just drop it to the end of the Could have just made the run in the first place.
whatever, whatever happens from here on out, we, we can't turn the well off anymore. Stop right there. Oh my god, look at him. Look at him aggregating. I right, let the whole squad get on. Oh my, reel it up, reel it up. Oh my god. Bro, are you gonna catch one? <laughs> Freaking haggard. Oh my god. Look at these sardines, dude. How you only caught three? I don't, I just don't know. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Just me and Ryan today, so we only need a crazy amount of bait to go king fishing. We probably got 200 sardines in this live well. First time putting bait in here. I'm pretty happy with it. We gotta do a couple more things to get it dialed. We got a couple cigars in the floor well, just, just to see. Look how sick that is. That is pretty sweet. What's going on with the drain with that right now? It's completely op it's open. It's slightly open. Is there even water coming in there? Right now? Yeah. A little bit. All right, we're about to go do some fishing. Let me show you real quick how, how ranked this bait is, though. So. Just, uh, just to show. It's so clear you can see him right out of the boat. Ready? Come here, Ryan. Pitch my beaky. Pitch my beaky. Pitch, pitch, pitch my beaky. Look at him. Oh my god. Drop. Stop it right there. Stop it right there. Take that fool. I wish they would TJ Maxx. They all went that way. It had to be all about the TJ Maxx. Yeah, it had to be all about the TJ. Oh. You get TJ Maxx? Sing oh, single Maxx? Very loner. I don't know, the whole school's coming out. I'm getting greedy. Oh my god. I'm getting greedy. Did you see the Joes? I would not get greedy. It's like 8.30 now, so we're just picking them. Um, we're gonna go do some fishing. See when we get out there. Oh, right, doggy. Pull the way you the kingfish pool. Oh, he came scraps. back for the, the scraps. <laughs> scrap eaters. He came back so hard for the freaking Scrapperton. Scrapperton's a third. Come on, tell me your first couple of fish. We need a little double ski on the new rig. The boys are sassy. Ryan put the first thing in the boat. Yeah, those are snakes, dude. Yeah. That was the right kind. That's the right kind there. Oh, get him. Oh my god, he got it right in I saw it, dude. I just saw him take a smoke at me. 
Uh-huh. Ryan got them on. Dude, I just got ate by a kingfish two feet behind the boat. Cast back here. Literally two feet. Cast right here, Ryan. Decent one. Yep. Yep. Get, come back here. Get on the GoPro. Hello. Oh Do you like that center or is it too I big? I like it a lot. Man. You like it? I like it a lot, a lot. I'm telling you the narrow ones are so nice. Cause they're a little bit smaller. Yeah, I know the red ones. No, the, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I could. Let's let <laughs> dead baited. Yeah. Watch you get smoked. I'm about to get hammered. Crap. Is that a king or what? Yeah, I'm out of it. It's like when your bait's flying and then, and then you just go supersonic. Oh, nice. right on. Oh, man. Ah. You like that hook set? Uh. That's kind of gross species, species like. But I, I don't know yet. Oh, it might be a king. Yeah, see, dude, we're shallow. We're in 77. No, it's still very king out. Get him, Ryan. Here, just flip that one. Ew. First trip in the freaking new boat, boys. Catching a couple of things. Nice, Martin Ryan. Uh huh. Sliding. Ew. I know you, right, dog. Oh, you don't trip I'm on the free suit, swimmer Dean. He dumps it. No. Oh, pinker down from the deep on the triple hook. That thing's red, dude. That thing is red. Whoa! What kind of Johnman rig we got going on here? We're gonna put this fish in the box. I don't know what's going on here, boys. Nah. We're laid up at Sand Hill right now, boys and girls. Beans are stoked. <laughs> and uh, we gotta we gotta throw some more ice on these fish. So, moral of the story is. <clears throat> this was the first trip. You guys are gonna see this in the actual boat build video because why not? First fishing trip. Oh, something just blew up right there. Oh, somebody ate your Dean. Kuda's eating your Dean. <laughs> Hold on. And uh, look, this thing just isn't insulated very great. Water's freezing cold and got a little bit of ice, but not as not even close to as good as the angle. Angle ice don't melt. A couple nice muttons. But um, yeah, super stoked, can't complain. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. This took more work and uh, money than you guys could imagine. But uh, we're finally done with it and we're here at the sand bar. It's not what I've been dreaming about for a long time. Just be able to come over here and say we're done. Look, you gotta look from the little outside perspective how, how beautiful she is.
Come on, look at that. Look at that ride, doggy. Hi, dog. Throw me, throw me a Dean's. Don't, don't let him go in case we go back out for the afternoon.